completely different dynamic. Um, like from playing, because when you're playing, like you're you're in player mode. Yeah. But as a coach, you have to approach the game differently. And for me, I think the biggest adjustment is getting out of player mode. Because like I wanna like I, I see them struggling, like I can see the struggle coming, and I just wanna help so bad. Like I wanna <laughs> do it for them so bad. And I think that's the biggest adjustment from being a player and a coach is that you, you know, you, you, you can't get any, out there no more. You ever give him any advice about like, you know, your recruiting and thing, how you how you came up in high school? Let's speak a little bit about that. You know, I think like for you being like one of the top high school players in your class at that time, what was it like for you turning down? some of the like Georgia's and the Georgia Techs of the world to come to Memphis, how that all transpired with Cal and the recruiting. Talk to us about that a little bit. Uh, well, you know, for me, it was, it was my recruiting went from zero to a hundred so fast um, because I went from being this unranked kid to, you know, having a, a great summer of AAU basketball. And, you know, it goes from that to now. I remember the first letter I ever got, the first letter from a college was from Stetson. And Stetson's the school in Florida. And I told my mom, you know, and I got the letter. I'm like, I'm going to Stetson. Like, they <laughs> they the first school, you feel me? They the first school to send me a letter. That mean they got to want me. Like, I'm going to Stetson. She was like, nah, you know, let's just take our time and, you know, see what's going on, you know, at these other schools. And, you know, it went from, it went from me from Stetson to, you know, everybody but Duke and Carolina. You know, Carolina – offered me a scholarship, but they wanted me to go to prep school. And I was, you know, that just wasn't a, it wasn't a thought in my head going to prep school. But literally it went from zero to a hundred and it happened so fast that I didn't, it was like, I got so caught up in it that, you know, I didn't even really realize what was happening because it's like, you know, you see this, like, like I said earlier, you see this stuff online, like you see other kids going through it where the coaches are, sending them letters and calling and texting and coming to your school and then you know uh, before I know it I'm in it and my friends me like I'm I'm including my friends and everything like you know I'm letting my friends carry the stacks of letters around the school and you know we're, we're when, when I'm having these coaches meetings I'm got I got my best friends sitting in the coaches meetings with me like I felt like we went through that process together and you know for me the biggest thing for me when it came to recruiting was like, you know how Cal is. Like, when Cal's – when he wants you, like, he's going to do whatever. Like, he's going he's gonna to call you. He's going to let you know that you're a priority. But the biggest thing for me, the difference between Cal and every other coach that was recruiting me was Cal came to me on my home visit and said, you know, we want you, kid, but we don't need you. Yeah. And that did it for me because every other coach that came, you know, was – you'll get this and you will retire your Jersey and you're going to start and get X amount of minutes. And it just got, that got old for me fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had, and, and you know, literally it was every, every coach you could name come sit in my crib and tell me about, you know, how it would be this way and that way and this way. And Cal was like, look, bro, like <laughs> I want you to come to Memphis, bro, but don't get it twisted. Cause I don't need you. <laughs> and that was that was it for me. I was like, well, hell, I you know, I want to go play for this dude. Like, you know, he ain't guaranteeing me nothing. Like, I know it, I know it's gonna be a process. And, you know, I think it, I think it was up from there. We talked about all the time before. I remember, man, we were at uh we were at practice one day, and then he's like, Hey, you guys gotta go see this kid. We're trying to get here, man. They play at Ridgeway tonight. <laughs> we were like, all right, man, we're gonna go see him, man. <laughs> We get you game, <laughs> Y'all off. left that game like, yo, this kid. They're going to tip off. Thanks. Two minutes into the game, you go four fouls. We like, man, what the hell is going on? <laughs> we just sitting there. Coach like, man, y'all got to stay. We like, man, we trying to be out. He's like, nah, y'all got to stay, talk to him. We're like, all right. Like, man, yeah, all the people up there balling. Like, they thought we were there to see the kids from Ridgeway. We like, nah. We <laughs> man, I remember that game because I was, I, was so, I was so upset. Like, I was so upset at how I played. I'm like, man, these dudes ain't going to want me to come up here. <laughs> like, I, I remember because I talked to Pierre after the game, and Pierre was like, you know, like, you know, games like that happen, but, you know, just don't let it happen again, basically, is what he said. You know, he ain't said it like that. But, <laughs> you know, that's basically the gist of what he was saying. Like, you know, bad games happen, just don't let it happen again. I was like, well, you know, you definitely right. 
And you know, but but you know, being around y'all, and I think the dopest part about that was like, like you said, it wasn't two or three of y'all that was at the game. Yeah, like, it was 17 of y'all at the game, <laughs> managers included. Like, I remember I literally, I, I'm looking at Derrick Rose, and I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at Doge, and I'm looking at Joey Dorsey, and I'm, I'm like, like, y'all came to watch me? Like, what is y'all doing here? Like, I'm watching y'all on TV all the time. You feel me? Like, and that let me know about the, the culture of the city of Memphis at that time. Like, it was it was something completely different. Like that's and I think that's why that team that that team before I that before my freshman year, that team was special. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like that's just that's just the type of that's the type that's how y'all were moving at that point in time. And I think that was dope. I, I think honestly, I think you coming in though that you, you guys came you and Reed came in, man. It was special too because you guys were young, but at the same time you guys worked your asses off. One, we're at two. You know, always had our respects since summer school. But then, like, you guys wanted to win. Like, you know, we lost to Puerto Rico. I remember, like, yesterday, we get we get in the locker room. We lose to Xavier, you and Reed crying. And I'm like, man, yeah. y'all and coach going off. And I was like, fuck that. Like, they're the only ones crying. They give a shit, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I'm on the plane. I'm, and it's crazy because Chris was in the league at the time. And Chris is texting me, on, like, on the plane. And he like, man, I was telling him, he's like, he like, man, they was crying. I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, he's like, man, that's good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are kids who want to win. And, you know, at first we thought Cal was tripping, but, like, he really wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, so. That, that, was, that, was that, whole, that whole situation, Tone, was so crazy because me and Reek literally, like, we, we used to sit and we have conversations about, like, how dope we thought it was that year before y'all came. Like, how much pride y'all took in not losing games. And so here we are, our first damn tournament, and we smoke a game in the first month of the season. We like, man, we done let these dudes down. Like, <laughs> they telling us we top this class and all that. We like, man, we just smoked the game the first five games of the season. Like, oh, my God. But, you know, like you said, that that one loss, I think, really, really just lit a fire under that, under that, under the program at that time. Because we went on a tear, bro. We went like 27 in a row. After yeah, that. like we went on a tear, bro. It was and like, it's like, man, that, that, I think winning is a culture, man. Like, it's like, it's not a, that, I think that winning is like, a, it's a way of life. It's a way you approach everything in life. And y'all really, like, y'all emphasize that part of the game before we even touched the floor because y'all everything y'all did was a certain way and everything that happened was we did it together no matter where we went whether it was going to mcdonald's or if it was going out to get a you know something to eat or going to dance or whatever we did literally we did it 16 17 18 deep you feel me and i think that's a part of the reason why we were able to win so many games because we really were a unit so, so like how, you don't how see that out there. You man, like you, you play for Cal. I'm passionate in your time in Memphis. How hard was that for you? Cal leaves after your freshman year. The guy who brought you here, and you know, you know, he, he, he was like, man, I want Wesley. You know, like I would love to have Wesley come to Kentucky. And I talked to you. You as you know, we, I called you and your mom, and spoke to you. Like, what, what was your deciding factor, man? Like to stay in Memphis and ride it out and not go to UK with Cal? I, you know, it was hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, we when we, me and my family sat down and we discussed it, like we had a plan set in motion. And, you know, when, when we're at, where I'm at Memphis and it was like a month and a half with no coaching staff, like period. The only, the only guy that was still at Memphis with us was uh, Richard Hogan's, our strength coach. Yeah. And, you know, we're just in the gym. We're lifting crazy, but, you know, we're playing pickup. Like, there's nobody there to really tell us what to do. And so we get a text about passing and getting the head coaching job. And it's so crazy how that, how that went because at his press conference, you know, he's talking about, you know, how excited he is to get the job. And, you know, we're all in the back. You know, we're cracking jokes. We're just being kids. And he says something about guys, you know, graduating and, you know, the new class coming in and guys might be transferring. And I'm standing behind tag and I scream out, we ain't going nowhere, coach. And it was like 
the the headlines for everywhere. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, like, what did I just do? And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, I had a I had a solid freshman campaign. Like, you know, it's not mm-hmm. it can't be that much of a difference between leaving and staying because I was I was set to go. Like I was ready. You know, me and Cal had the exit meeting. You know, he told me, you know, look, this is what it is. This is a this is a job that you don't really pass up on. And, you know, it's just like how kids have dream schools they want to play at. Coaches have that same, you know, that same process about certain schools that you just really don't pass up on. So, you know, he left. I was I planned on going with him into the press conference. When the press conference happened, I was like, well, I can't leave now. <laughs> you know, they done blasted me on all these billboards, you know, saying we ain't going nowhere, coach, and all this type of stuff. And I was like, well, you know. In my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, one more year, two tops, and, you know, I'm going to figure it out after that. And, yeah. you know, injury after injury after injury after injury, you know, led to what ended up being, you know, the uh, rest uh, of my college career. It's that, time of, it's that time of year again, folks. Conference tournaments are tipping off. Bubble teams are making their final push for a bid. All the best teams in the country are gearing up for a deep run. Auto bids will be punched. Slippers will be fit. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, are putting my listeners at the center of action. If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. Download the app now and use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There is no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to use than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, that's code FIELD68. That's FIELD68 to turn dollars into $256. For a limited time only, must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DriveKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I, I think it's you know, because I had Will um, Barton on a few weeks ago, and he was saying when he got there, you was like the person that kind of molded him a bit, you know, like you got to go out and practice and pick up. And, like, he kind of got his kind of mental toughness and that college expectation from going to get – going against yourself and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that that's huge, man. Like, so now, you, we, you know, you graduate, you, you, you know, you play pro ball, you, you start playing a couple of years ago, and then now, like, you watch Memphis, as you always watch, you know, like, as we were playing as well after college. What's it like now seeing Penny take over? We had Tubby there. What was it like after seeing Tubby? Now, Penny, what's your whole feel of the program, where it's going? How, how you feel of that thing? Well, you know, for me, it's, it's it was it was a roller coaster when I was in school and I think the roller coaster continued after I left because, you know, the first couple of years I left, you know, I felt like there was still, there was still certain guys that were around to really see Memphis when it was Memphis, you know, because Chris Crawford, Joe Jackson, Tark Black, like those guys were around, you know, to watch, they got to, they got to see the tail end of your run. Like they got to, they got to see, you know, me when I was there and I was, you know, when 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 things was still thriving in the city. So they they kind of understood what it was like to see Memphis as Memphis. Yeah. You know, and I feel like <clears throat> after those guys left, um, the expectation changed because a lot of those guys never knew what it was like to not lose the conference game. Yeah. You know, to to sweep the conference. So, you know, for me, seeing it now. And I think the tide is kind of making that turn again. It's, it's, it's like getting back to what it was, seeing the city. The city is buzzing again about basketball because for a few years it was like, who cares about football, Memphis basketball? Football, football. Yeah, like, and I'm like, oh, man, like when I was in school, the football team won like four games in four years. Yeah. And now I see them, they're going to bowl games and, you know, winning the bowl games. And I'm like, man, is Memphis, did Memphis turn into a football school? Like, what happened? <laughs> and, you know, when, when Penny got the job, it was the first time that I, that I saw, because, you know, I go to, I try to make it to Memphis Madness every year. 
And that was the first time I saw the city actually look like the city when it came to Memphis basketball. Because that was one of the biggest things, excuse me, that was one of the biggest things for me in my recruiting process. Like I'm seeing how you guys really had the city. Like we got the Grizzlies, but this is Tiger Town. Like we we care about, mm-hmm. you know, the Memphis Tigers and seeing y'all like, I remember I'll never forget, I saw y'all out and Rudy Gay was with you guys. And everybody was around you guys, like <laughs> trying to talk to you guys way more than Rudy Gay. And I'm like, do they not know that Rudy Gay's in the NBA? Like, <laughs> does that know how this works? Like, what is happening right now? <clears throat> and I think that was like it is it, it was crazy to see because like that's the type of love that the Memphis Tiger basketball program has in the city of Memphis. Like they are diehard Memphis fans. Like if you're not if you're not from Memphis or you've never experienced the city of Memphis when it came to Tiger basketball, you just wouldn't understand. Yeah. Because people people don't understand, they don't get it when we tell them that Memphis I, has one of the best fan bases in the country. I, I really think it was crazy, man. I remember, you know, Joe Jackson came uh, to watch us practice. He was like a sophomore in high school, or something like that. Uh, I think you were still in high school at that time as well. Uh, Joe comes to practice. You know, I'm talking to him after practice, and I'm leaving out. And a uh, Saturday, you know, one of those Saturday, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday, one of those like two days we were doing, and. Uh, He's like, man, y'all were having a party tonight. I said, no, I'm going to have no party, man. We going out, though. We going to the club, man. He was like, I want to go. I was like, right, I'll call you. Give me a number. He was like, you, you can't get me. I'm in the 10th grade. I yeah, said, him, all right. Him and, <laughs> him and Trey Draper met me at Senses, man. We got them. Them boys that changed their life, man. <laughs> oh, I remember that night, Tone. I was a freshman then. That was a the night. Look, I'm going to tell you even, even something more crazier than you getting them in. You walked up to the club in a t-shirt, sweatpants, and flip-flops <laughs> and Nike slides. And and you know, we all walked in the spot. Like, I'm like, nah, like this dude is like God down here. Like, <laughs> yo, you wanna know the Ill- yo, I, I I don't even really like talking about it, but that day at practice, bro, Cal moved me to start practicing at point. <laughs> this is the funniest and, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, I, I played point before. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, I'll adjust. It's going to be a simple adjustment for me. And Cal gave you the okay to just do whatever, like, when it came to me defensively. And it got to the point where Cal started keeping my turnovers on the scoreboard. <laughs> and at the end of practice, I had like 69 turnovers, bro. And... You just, you fouling me, you grabbing me, you hip checking me, you pushing me down. And I'm like, man, I'm going I'm to keep going. But at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> I think that was the day when I, when I got a lot of y'all's respect. Because that day at practice, like, I broke down mentally. And instead of y'all laughing, y'all were like, nah, like, this is a part of the process. It's almost like an initiation kind of thing. And I remember I called my mom after that practice because I'm so frustrated. Like I picked the ball and I threw it at you. And when I threw it at you, you was like, I think he gets it. Like I think he's starting to make that turn. And I was so scared when I threw the ball at you because I'm looking like you 6'5", 225, (laughs) chiseled, solid. And I'm like, man, this dude about to beat me down. And I'm, you know, I threw the ball and I'm like, you know, whatever comes after this, I'm ready for it. Like, I'm like, man, I'm about to die for this Memphis basketball. And, you know, I think that was the day when you were like, yeah, like, all right, he want us now. Yeah, you know, because, you, know, you know, for- Coach, Coach hit, he hit me uh, that, that morning and he's like, I need you to, like, rough what's up, man. Like, cause, you know, practice before, he was like, and every time he got fouled, he was complaining, looking for us to call foul. I'm not gonna call foul to him. I'm gonna make you guard him. Like foul him, do whatever. So you know, in my head, I'm like, damn, like my man, 18, like. <laughs> and I was like 170 pounds. Like you know, I don't know if people know who you were as a defender, but yeah. like even still to this day, like when when it comes to best defenders that I've ever played against, like you're literally in that top tier of guys because you had everything: lateral yeah. quickness, you were strong, you were physical. And you literally guard it without fouling. 
Yeah. Like I watched you do it. Like you you guarded the best players in Conference USA, the best players in the country, and you did it without fouling. Like, and that that's an elite level talent. But that day in practice, you beat the hell out of me. Yeah, man. What was like you, you got outside of that one? Give me one one of your funniest stories with Kyle, and then one of your funniest with Coach Passion. Oh man, so I'll never forget, right? So Cal makes it his issue, right, to tell guys that you don't have time for fraternity. Like this is your fraternity, <laughs> basketball is your fraternity. And Willie Kemp plays Q Dog. So now Willie Kemp is a Q Dog. You know, Donnell Mack ended up being becoming a Sigma, but Donnell Mack wasn't as, you know, open about his situation as Willie Kemp was. So, you know, Willie's got the brands on him, like he's wearing his boots, his purple and gold is everywhere. <laughs> and one day in practice, Willie was just messing up so many times. And Cal stopped practice. Like if, if you, everybody who knows Cal, especially back then, like Cal had a little limp in his walk. Like it wasn't like a significant limp, but he had a little limp in his walk. And so Cal stopped practice. Said, God damn it, Willie. You too busy worried about your stomp, dog. And he started jumping around like a cute dog. Oh man, that that day in practice was hilarious. And Cal, like, so Cal had the program to where, like, when funny stuff would happen like that, you'd almost be scared to laugh because you yeah. didn't want to get in trouble too. So now it's the everybody in the gym. Like when he starts jumping around like a cute dog, everybody in the gym is like head down. Like we got our jerseys up over our face because we're trying to hold our laughs in. That was my funniest cow story. Even I didn't, I nothing tops that for me. That was the funniest day. And uh, so one day, one day when uh, when me and Pastner, uh, me and Pastner got into a screaming match, uh, the practice before, and you know, he was he was telling me, you know, I wasn't focused, and you know, the other guys were looking at me, you know, for motivation and you know, leadership and all this type of stuff. And so I ended up being late to study hall that day. So he made me run before practice. So I get down my running, you know, I go to the back, you know, I change my clothes, I put my practice stuff on. And then and my, I'm like, I'm like, all right. So he just made me run because I'm late to study hall. So we had a, we had like a, the, uh, the public practice, a couple of practices before. So I go and I got my collar shirt. I got, you know, headbands and arm sleeves and long socks. I got all this stuff in my locker. And so I put all this stuff on. Like I put my collar <laughs> shirt. I got two headbands on. I got two arm sleeves, wristbands, leg sleeves. I got all this stuff on. I got mismatched shoes on. And because I know the media is going to be out there trying to interview us. So I get out to the court with all this stuff on. Long sleeve shirt, arm sleeves and all this stuff. And Pastor looks at me and puts his head in his head. And the media comes and tries to interview me. And I run to the back to change my clothes again. And that day, that day was funny with Pastor too. Nah, man. Those the Coach P, man, someone I, I still talk to Coach Pastor as well. Um, but man, yeah, like so again, my last question for you is watching the Memphis Tigers now. Who's 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 your favorite tiger watching now? Tell me a little bit why. Uh, for me, I like the big kid, man. Uh, 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 Cisse, I think his name is. Who's it? Yeah, yeah, I like him, man. Uh, he, he's he's like he's one of those guys I felt like could have played when we were in school, because you know he's 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 big, he's physical, he's just he's kind of lost right now. I like uh, I like Alo too. Alo is one of my favorites too. I feel like could have played with us because he defends. Like you know, he's yeah. one of those guys that's going he's gonna get in you and he's gonna do it without fouling. Like, and I think that's those are those are the type of guys that I feel like emphasize what Memphis basketball is. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Hey, Wes, my, I got do got some more for you, man. You're in Memphis and you're hungry. You want chicken wings only, chicken wings only. Where you going? Is that a question? Yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> it's, it's two places for me. Two places for me. And it's the only two places I ever get chicken wings from in Memphis. One is Ching's. And two is East Memphis Pizza Subs. I don't know if you remember Aaron, but Aaron used to bring us those wings and potatoes, like the, the yeah. stuffed potato plates. Man, that's the only two places I go get chicken from in Memphis. What about Soul Food? If I'm going to Soul Food, I'm probably going to, 
I can't even remember the name of this place. It's in South Memphis, though, man. It's a little hole in the wall restaurant. Ah, I can't remember the name of it, man. Food was so good, though. It was older, older ladies in there cooking it. I cannot remember the name of that place, man. I'm gonna have to. I might have to go look it up and find it and text it to you, man. That food was so good, man. The older, older ladies in there cooking it, chefing it, bringing it to you. I felt like I was at the crib, man. <laughs> Hey, man, I appreciate you jumping on with me, man. It means a lot. You know that, man. Man, it's love, Tone. You know that, bro. Appreciate you, my guy. Already. Later.